welcome to another episode of the Player Ultra podcast. This is episode one zero nine. Yeah. Yeah, usual three of us, but we have a guest. Kelly's back this Hi. week. She back. She back. And Fo's kind of frozen. I'm not sure. What? Oh no! Oh no! You he's not frozen. To me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you all? Doing fine. I actually did play a couple of new games this week. I didn't like finish anything, but I did start some. Um, one that I've recorded that I will probably be putting up probably a while from now, to be honest. Uh, Another I attempted to record and failed to record, though not through fault of my own. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I don't know if you guys have heard, there's a new visual novel that's, well, not really new, but it's it's new-ish in the last couple months or so, but it's free. It's called Cinderella Phenomenon. It's uh, one of those lovely Ren Pai um, uh, (laughs) visual novels, but it's actually really well done, even though it's free. Um, I was, it was highly recommended because the fact that it's free and it's such high quality, so basic otome kind of style yeah so you're a girl a bunch of guys although i'm not sure if everyone's a guy there's one that they seem to i don't know what they're going for for gender because we have met when they identify as he and met when they've identified as she so i'm not exactly sure (laughs) but we'll see i I don't know enough about the story uh the story itself is it's basically kind of meant to be like a twist on fairy tales um the one thing about it that makes it very unique i would say especially for an otome game is the lead heroine is not likable at all in like the first part of the game and that's actually a plot point like the whole point is the fact that she's not a likable person um not Mm -hmm. extremely so they do a decent job though of making her like still interesting so she's unlikable Mm -hmm. in more of an interesting stubborn way not in a like oh my gosh like i can't even get to this get inside this lady's head and it's obvious that she's gone through some traumatic experiences and stuff like that 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 form her um she's just she's very very stubborn she she does not believe in the good of people and stuff like that but it's it's a little like kind of angsty eye rolly i mean i kind of make fun of it when i play it um when i'm recording it but it's actually not that terrible and it is a plot point like trying to have her learn is she to lame be kinder not, no not really um i could see how some people I, I could see how my border on that at times but they do a decent job of really exploring it and i think it's gonna turn out long story short her mother passed away, and there's hints, though, that you find out her mother was probably a bit ab- negligent or abusive. Not, like, abusive in the traditional sense, but abusive and very much, like, no one will love you as much as I will. Don't trust anybody. Like, that kind of thing. Or, you know, people, they, they, they show you a flashback of, like, how, you know, the main heroine had, like, a dying bird in her hands, and the mom was like, oh, well, it died because it was weak. So, you know, it was very much, like these are things that were ingrained in her head, you know? And so that's kind of why she is the way she is. She's very bitter, I would say. Um, but, so, f- it might be too much for some people, but they're they're treading the line right now, but I think they do a decent job. And she's not, like, Mary Sue about it at all. She's, the whole thing is everyone's like, wow, you're really mean. <laughs> like, it's definitely, she has to learn to not be. So I'll be interested to see how her character develops and how they do that. Um, but for they are, a free game? Well, it's, it's free. pretty complete. Yeah. Yeah. Two hundred K words, ten endings, and a bunch of other yep. stuff. Holy shit. That's that's yeah, I know. For a free visual novel, that's crazy. So what is this right choice indicator? Okay, yeah, I can there tell are no you, right I, choices. Okay, I can actually <laughs> tell you a little bit about that. I haven't gotten super far in the game because I'm recording it, so I'm voicing all the lines myself, so it slows down the pace a little bit. Um, but e, um, so they, they do explain it at one point. I have it. You can enable or disable it. I was going to disable it for my first time and then enable it for the other times I try to play it. But basically, they, they tell you when you, um, through colored crystals when you've made a choice that basically is the right choice for a certain like guy basically so i made a choice early on that put me more towards the path of this one person and they gave me a little colored indicator that was their example i don't think it's going to show up for the rest of the game because i disable it but they showed it as an example and they show you a little like later on like um they, they it may not show right away your choice they they Sometimes it may be like they wait a little bit, a few lines to show you like, yep, you're in the right path. So it's meant, I think, to kind of make it seem a little less random with your choices. Mm. I'll see how it plays out. Yeah, just to kind of 
Yeah, it's. It, I think it's not a bad idea. Otome and visual and novels, especially. Thing. Yeah, it's an optional thing. I had it turned off for my first time, but I think for my other times I will have it on, just so I feel knowing, even though I'm going to follow a walkthrough after my first time. Well, yeah, um, if you've got ten endings possible, it's kind of nice to know, mm. like, okay, I've played it just the way that I'm going to play it n- without knowing how it's going to turn up, and then once you know, okay, I got that ending, and they're like, well, what about this other person or that other person? You don't have to waste a bunch of time trying to figure out I the other rabbit I just want to get in your pants. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Is that the point of these? I'm just kidding. Um, but no, I, it is, I, right? I, I do... 200,000 words <laughs> just to get in people's pants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dull. But no, I, I, I think it's nice. I mean, one of the issues with visual novels in general, uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is when the choices that, you, when it's not very, it, when it seems very random what your choices mean, like, hmm. what, the only choice I've made so far in this game, and remember, I am not that far in the game because I've been, it's taking a while for me since I'm recording it. One of the first choices I had to make was either turning, literally, left or right. And I ha- and I know that depending on where you go, you're going to meet up with one of the guys. And I always have a very... And so they have that right choice indicator to show you, like, you're on the path for this dude. <laughs> so that's when it came up for me. Um, which is nice, because I actually hate those kinds of decisions when, it met, when they use those to determine which guy's path you're on. Because it's like, well, that's just random. Like, why do I have no choice or agency in this matter, you know? Instead of being yeah. like, who are you going to approach to talk to? It's like, literally, what choice do you have? Like, it's one thing if that's your yeah. introduction, but when it matters so much, it's kind of... Uh, but that's just how they make it. So they show you that. So at least that's nice. Has there been um, any other game that does that? The right I mean, choice indicator? Vision novel, yeah. <sighs> Not that I know of. Um, uh, trying to think. Um... Not, not that I can think of in recent memory. Um, I mean, I, I would say that the best, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, best example of something similar to that that a lot of Otome games have done. Not really professional ones, but like kind of freebie ones. They have the meters, so you can see like a meter of how far you are to affection with a certain guy. It's a little mm. similar in that case. Um, with those ones, usually it's because you, you you know you're going for a certain guy with those kinds of games. Because those are the kind of games where literally you're like, okay, I have 100 days to date a guy. Who am I going to be with today? Well, I'm going to go for the same guy all 100 days so we finally get married at the end. <laughs> like, it's for those kind of games. So this is a little different because it's not like that. But I would say that's probably the same, the similar kind of idea. As far as, like, a right choice indicator, I'm not sure. The um, visual novel my friend is making... Um, who she got kickstarted on. She was the one who also was the leader of Free Lucid 9, and she's currently making Zodiac Axis. She is also doing a rights choice indicator kind of thing for her mm. game as well. So I think it's coming. <laughs> That's good. But yeah, I'll be I'm excited to see what, what happens more and I see all the hot like boys. It. So. <laughs> you can I like choices. I don't like choices. I don't like having being judged for my choices. <laughs> like, oh, you made the wrong choice, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot! Like, Every time you get wrong choices, goals than you. that's the wrong guy to have sex with. <laughs> they just, I just every time you make the wrong choice, I just need a like a soon soon voice of you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I was picturing uh, Trailer Park Boys when he has Conky, like, hey Julian, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. No, it should it should be more subtle. It should be a more subtle game mechanic. It should just be mm. the the bell of shame, just like ding shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cone of shame. Here is your cone. <laughs> oh, this might be interesting to to uh, at least Fo and Kelly. Have you guys heard of the new game <laughs> called me. Citadel Forged with Fire? No, it's mm-hmm. a great name. It's a crafting survival game. But fantasy, so like dragons and like that kind of shit. Good reviews, and wait, wait. apparently, mm-hmm. that's, that's a good if I'm not mistaken, there's no like hunger and water meter or whatever. I think. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. And I like cooking, <laughs> but I don't like worrying about being hungry. I like it when cooking just gives you buffs, like in WoW. Mm-hmm. Mm. Apparently, from the reviews I read, it's like fundamentally the the design itself the core design is good it's just like the you know like early access stuff the uh the polish say the, say like the name of it again citadel forged with fire because i'm not really sure how it's um set up like is it servers or is it like um an mmo i'm not too sure but it's basically like yeah. building your own castle and stuff like that 
Interesting, because I was just hearing about another game this week called Dark, Dark and, Light. and Light, which sounds like a ripoff of Black and White, but it's <laughs> actually, it it's basically <laughs> Ark, but without dinosaurs, and dragons and magic instead. I've heard, well, the reviews I've read compared Citadel and Dark and Light, and they say Citadel is the better one. Oh, and, okay. And if I'm not mistaken, no Dark and Light is an, is an old MMO, is it? That it remade. You, I'm not I think sure. of Might and Magic. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I did. Don't know. I. My only exposure yeah. to it is uh, every aspect. A blah blah Discord blah. Reimagined, re were upgraded from 2004 original. Yeah. 2004. Yeah. The fossil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fossil. Might be something cool to play for your channels. I think. Yeah, hey. I'll definitely <laughs> take a look. Early access sandbox games are always hard because. Yeah. They're it's always super figuring new out the UI and recipes. Yeah. Like I was liking, I was liking uh, Don't Starve a lot until they added like a sanity meter, mm. and then, like I was playing Steam they, Hammer, but it's just hard to play right now. They might add a hunger meter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably will. Uh, have you uh, guys Adventure heard Craft about is... um, the uh, Doctor Who stuff? The new Doctor the actress new doctor? contest. The female yeah. Doctor. <laughs> Ghastly. Yeah, I mean, I've seen, uh, I've seen the Twitter cat fights back and yeah. forth. So you've seen the <laughs> outrage. Have you seen the outrage yeah. from both sides seen, or just one side? I hadn't really seen any. Um, have you seen the complainers it? or I... the people complaining about the complainers more? Neither. I've seen. I, I've seen. Um, because I mean, I don't, I don't follow a ton of people on Twitter. I'm following people that are other streamers or content creators. Um, game developing people that aren't super like intense about that kind of stuff, but then their they their followers or people that they you know they they'll come into my feed, hmm. and so right. it'll be some random person that's like you know for everybody that is has a problem with a female lead, it's just because your manhood feels threatened and blah blah blah, and check your privilege and I don't know what, and I'm just like rolling my eyes like oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I. I've You're making most... it worse. You're making it worse. <laughs> I, I I know for me personally, because uh, for me it's usually my Facebook that I usually check for you know the kind of complaint. Most people I've seen have been that don't uh, have been like yay kind of thing. I've only seen one yeah. guy that was upset about it, but I will to get to be fair to him, it's not because he thinks he he's more of wor he's more. It's not because he's like it shouldn't be a female. For him, he just is worried mm -hmm. that it's meant to be a gimmick. Um, and he also didn't realize that yeah, Muffet, possible. the guy who's also who used who used to lead write it, um, he's stepping down. Everyone hates him. I can't think of his name. So it's an M. Anyway, it's interesting. Is Moffat? It's interesting Moffitt. because people loved him when he guest wrote a couple episodes, but mm -hmm. then he took over the whole show. And it's like, oh, it's actually pretty yeah. bad now. <laughs> and everybody hated it. Yeah, I haven't met I'd a single person who watching. likes him. I was watching up until that moment, actually. Yeah, yeah. I haven't met a single person that that likes him. And I, the, the, the guy I'm telling you who, who was not happy at first when they, but just because he was worried, it was just Moffat trying to like be a gimmick kind of thing. And then when he heard that he actually was no longer the lead writer, he was like, oh, okay. So, well, that's good. Um, that doesn't yeah. rule out it being a gimmick, unfortunately. Yeah, that's true yeah, too. But at this it point, how are we going to know when it's a gimmick and when it's not? I mean, at some point, you right, know what I mean? We, like We cannot know until we watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Can we still know though after watching it? After watching know. it, for sure, potentially. Well, you okay. Really, what if, if it's we, just bad? <laughs> if we just if we just roll this back into simpler terms, because um, I I went to school for film, so like right. I've I've heard people talking about okay, um, there's always that war between what's going to sell, and mm -hmm. when can I speak from the heart, right. and trying to find that crossover of what's going to make money because we all have a budget, we all have to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. But what's going to be something that's that bridges into a topic that you feel needs more discussion? And um, it's tricky. So I feel that pretty much anything that comes out is some kind of gimmick because um, we've come so far since, you know, the black and white movies where it was, you know, super macho man, like damsel in distress. Like we, we have come a long way from that. Um, and so it's kind of funny to me when there's people complaining that there's, uh, cause it's not completely equal. It's not there yet. But when they act like 
no progress has been made. It's like, guys, you know, we, we have made progress, acknowledge that. So I think that um, anything that comes out, there's some level of gimmick to it. But I don't think it's always necessarily a bad thing, depending on how they portray it and how it's executed. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to get eyeballs, but they're also trying to make money, but they're also trying to um, address issues that they feel need to be brought to the table. I can't say that for larger companies, though, um, that are, oh, let's see, let's say, for example, Netflix, <laughs> you know, they're, they're more concerned on the budget side than, you know, let's address these, these hot topics, these issues that are very controversial. But for independent uh, filmmakers, I think it's more towards the heart side than the budget side. So it's, it, it, every, every case is its own thing. Everything has I- to be taken case by case. I think it's interesting because, yeah, I never really thought of it that way. It's like anything someone would do would technically be a gimmick because, of course, they, they want to make money. There's no, like, people aren't making art for free. <laughs> you can't, like, in this day. You just can't. So, yeah, of course they're going to do with what sells. And right now this would probably sell. So, it yeah, I think that does make a lot of sense. I think, for me, I think it's going to be if it's bad, it's bad. Whether that makes it a gimmick or not, okay, but... I don't know. I think it might be easier just to be like, "Well, that sucked. That was like that was bad writing. They did the bad thing writing is, for this doctor." All they did was, "Hey, here's our new Doctor Who for the next whatever season, whatever." Because yeah. they always have to announce the new Doctor yeah. Who, right? That's a thing yeah, that yeah, they yeah. always do. And yeah, the thing is, that's all they did. Like, here's the new yeah. Doctor Who that we casted instead of like the <laughs> mm-hmm. Ghostbusters one. Hey, this is the all female cast. If you don't like it, you're a sexist. Basically, mm. <laughs> maybe maybe it's not qu- super comparable, but one but something that I think is fairly comparable that didn't I didn't hear really any reaction about was one of the best things in the Moffat Doctor Who, is uh, one of the probably the biggest recurring villain to Doctor to the Doctor is the Master, and mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. the Moffat series the Master regenerates as a female, which was badass. Yeah. She was a really cool yeah. character, but I didn't really any nobody really said anything about it that I was exposed to. Yeah, that was actually something I did hear a lot where some people, like, in reaction to the reaction, you know, that whole thing, whether, how many, so. But I did hear that a lot of people were like, guys, we've already had a female master. Why are we freaking out about this? You know, which is yeah. which is true. It's like, okay. <laughs> oh, well. I think for the most part, people aren't really freaking out that much. Because um, most of the things no. I think more I, people are freaked out by the writing. <laughs> I still yeah. probably won't watch Doctor Who. <laughs> I'm still not going to watch it either way. Right, I don't know. I never even, be- I only watched, I started with Nine, and honestly, I just didn't keep going. It wasn't bad. I actually quite liked Do- the Ninth Doctor, but I just, <laughs> Christopher there's Eccleston's so much. still my favorite. I don't know which one that is. I think it's the one you're talking about. I think. Oh, oh, okay. The bald guy? I didn't hear the name. With the big ears? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eccleston. I didn't hear the name. Eccleston. Eccleston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Hearing. Bad. But he yeah. also so- randomly the bad guy in the second Thor movie, but you wouldn't recognize him from all the makeup. Mm, he never speaks. He only speaks alien the whole time. Uh, <laughs> it's a very a poor usage of your Eccleston. <laughs> very sad. I do like yeah. him. <sighs> but yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah, Eccleston is number nine. Yes. Yeah. He's cool. What I saw, I only saw a few episodes of him, but I like it. It's just overwhelming. I don't know. I think it's part of the reason I haven't really got to, into Doctor Who. Like, I, <laughs> It just seems very overwhelming to start now, and so I'm just like, do I really it's want like to? It's like One Piece. Yeah. Yeah! And like now you know fairy what I did? tales ending? <laughs> what? Did you just start with Matt Smith? You started with something else. What did you do? Um, okay, so a lot of people are like, Doctor Who this, Doctor Who that, and I see like all the <laughs> merchandise all throughout the stores, and I'm like, you know, maybe I should try it out. It seems pretty popular. And then anytime I would mention that to somebody that was really into Doctor Two, Doctor Who, they would say like, "You got to start with this Doctor. You got to start with that season. Don't even bother with this, no, and you can skip over that." And I, everyone at, at one point, I was like, "All right, we're gonna watch episode number one, the very first one they ever made. That's what I'm well, gonna watch first. I mean, <laughs> have you seen my, it, Sarah? One of Just my friends clarify, would say I to don't do know it. it's the first one ever made. I think they lost the first few episodes because they weren't saving <laughs> footage back then." <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. Okay, well the the very but first one that was available to me, black and white and crap. I watched it with a friend of mine. I was like, okay, we're gonna do this, and he was like, okay, <laughs> um, be sure to grab a drink. We're gonna need it. And I said, all right. Yeah, but it I was like black and white, 
Oh yeah, no. The first episode, nothing really happened. They just sort of like wandered around and there was a lot of talking and they, I think at the very end of the episode, they finally ended up kidnapped. But for most of it, like Mm. nothing happened. It was super boring. And I was just like, where? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) They said you could start with a later season, but I didn't fully believe them until I actually saw it. I, I do, I have to admit, I have to make fun of this friend of mine. He's not super serious when he says this, but this this is my friend who um, is, like, just to give you an example of kind of obsessive he is with these certain kind of things, he insists that if you're going to read Lord of the Rings, you need to start with a Cimmerillion. <laughs> like, that's how... Oh, it's so wow. hard to read. No one's going <laughs> to finish know. that. I know. My mom did. He's, he's read I mean, it, like, yeah, three times. Yeah, but don't start with it. <laughs> he has, he's, like, read it three times. Anyway, like, that's how... He is about things. He's the one that was like, you need to start with the first doctor. And I was like, is he a gatekeeper? Me? He sounds like a gatekeeper. <laughs> Probably. He's not that like ridiculous about okay. it, but it is kind of funny. Like he's not going to like enforce it, but he, he, that's what he did. Got basically. It. <laughs> he's just kind of crazy that way. Well, you I don't tell know. Him because the Princess because of like the Cimmerillion was the creation of everything, right? Like how mm-hmm, everything mm-hmm. came to be in the lands of the Lord. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. It might be kind of interesting to read the books, just like the way, um, you know, the all the series of Lord of the Rings, just from the start of like I don't know, even the Hobbit, and then move on to um, the the rest of them. But then, um, then go back and read the Cimmerillion, because that's what my mom did, and she was, and she, I think she had a different kind of appreciation for the Cimmerillion, and it probably made it easier to read. Because you're like, oh, yeah, and that was when that happened, and that's how that got there, and that's why that inscription was on that stone in that place, and that's mm-hmm. what this was talking about. And so I think if you read them all in quick succession, starting with the stuff that's easier to read, fast-paced, interesting, and then go to the history book, I, I feel like uh, that's and a that's better the way, plan. That's the way Narnia is numbered. It doesn't start... The first book in the Narnia series isn't the one where Aslan like, breathes the reality into existence. I, I totally, I remember the first, because my brother, I never actually read all of the Narnia, Chronicles of Narnia, but my brother had them all. I totally read number zero, not, I totally did not start with the language and the wardrobe. I started with, what is it called, not, the, the nephew I don't or think, something? I don't, I don't know that's <laughs> the very first confusing. one. It's very confusing. I don't know. It was, the, it was like a confusing. prequel or something. <clears throat> are all the movies, are all the books in, into movies now? No. Not all of no. them. Only a three of them? I only saw the first one, so I don't oh. know. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is the first one. Okay. It's the first one, but there's a number zero. It's well, I mean, like I mean it's the first so one <laughs> in the series of books. It is not the first in the timeline. That's what, what I mean. I read the first in the timeline. Right. <laughs> I know, yes. I'm saying it's like book four or five, whatever it is. Yeah. The Silver Chair. Yes. I thought that already yeah. came out. Not yet. It didn't come out? The last one was oh, okay. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. The Dawn Treader. Yeah. I, never, I, uh, I never got into that They're series. They're pretty huh? successful movies. I did not know that. They're reasonable. I knew the As first a kid, I well. watched the BBC show version of it over and over again. <laughs> I'd run it from the library. It's funny. I never got into the Chronicles of Narnia, which is strange considering my mother. I mean, but it, I never got into it. <laughs> I don't. Speaking of series, now. you wouldn't. It's, it's good as a kid. I wouldn't say oh. go see it as an adult. <laughs> yeah. And Fair I, enough. But yeah. But yeah. We'll Another series that has been um, kind of a mixed bag when converted to uh, video entertainment is um, the Lemony Snicket series, series of mm. unfortunate events. I don't know if you guys have read those books. Um, oh, yeah. When the furries, he when has. the series first came out, okay, it was like it was amazing. Like I, I got to the thirteenth book, I cried. It was it was like a life changing experience. <laughs> and then the movie came out. And I just remember thinking, like, oh, my God, for the first time in my life, I read the book before I saw the movie, and this is going to be a really weird experience. And, of course, the movie was disappointing. I was able to very quickly point out, like, that's not how that happened. That's not how that happened. Oh, my God, this was a brilliant twist in the book, and they completely changed it. What the fuck? Like, just really upset. (laughs) And then then they came out with the book based on the movie, based on the books. I didn't know that. They yeah, did. it was it was pretty cringy. I was walking through the bookstore and I saw that and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> you gotta buy this book. It's got Jim Carrey in it, you guys. Oh my and gosh. like, and the movie wasn't that great to begin with. Like, it was okay. I, I actually right. really appreciated Jim Carrey as Count Olaf because I feel like... the best part. Yeah, like that was, that's the one of the few actors that could actually pull off a really crazy character like that. But then, um, 
So I like Jim Carrey in the movie. Now there's yes. also a TV series that came out that That's has the narrator. Series. Yeah, and I like it. I think it's good. It's 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 better than the movie. I agree. Yeah, definitely. And it it's still you still get the flavor from the books, and it feels like it's staying true to the books. But at the same time, it stands apart from the books. So it's like you could experience both of them separately and enjoy them for different reasons. But it's still like, yeah, this is all happening in the same universe, and it's it feels more hand in hand than the movie did to the books. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, I just wanted to say, since we were talking about adaptations yeah. of things, nice. meanwhile, I heard the Assassin's Hasn't... Creed movie was bad. <laughs> it came out. Yeah, Assassin's like it. Creed movie? It's been out oh, for a man. while. That was completely was... under my radar. It don't was bad. It. I, had some, I had some friends. Yeah, don't watch it. I The only reason I was thinking of maybe watching is because I figured the uh, the, the stunts would be really cool. But I guess sure. that wasn't enough to save it. Cause my, my friends because there wasn't enough stunts. It. Oh, okay. I actually yeah. didn't know that. I just heard it was a flop. Yeah, I had some, some of my uh, friends did go see it. Cause uh, they were, cause I'm not a huge Assassin's Creed person. Like I, mm. I, I played the first game. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's I better know. to start with the second, probably. Yeah, I did the I first one cause I'm try hard, but yeah. Yeah, I. Well, see, you have to understand when I played the first one, that's all there was. There was no second one, and then oh, I just never. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I played it like I was 16, and I was like, oh, my first rated M game. Don't tell mom. Literally, like was my friend and I M? played it. Yeah, it was rated M back yeah. then. Oh. Yeah, I, it was it was really funny because back then I wasn't allowed to play rated M games, but I was 16 and my friend and I, we were playing it like we did it because it was like her brother's copy. And we both knew the game. And so we were playing it secretly. We weren't telling our mother. It was really funny. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I know. But um, yeah, and I just never picked up the second one. <laughs> so I, you know, I've seen them. I've my, my brother's been playing. Uh, he played Unity. I've told these guys this already. And he's and he played um, Syndicate. Unity was mm-hmm. horrible, but Syndicate looks really good. Anyway, but uh, no, my friends went to see, because they're huge fans of Assassin's Creed, and they went to see the movie opening night, and they were really excited about it, and they were just like, nope. Why would you <laughs> be excited about it? <laughs> yeah, I've no, never, never mm-hmm. seen a movie adaptation of a thing before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. know. Mm-mm. Especially video games. Especially video games. Yeah. So far, Castlevania is the only to one that's fed, good. To be fair, that was Michael <laughs> Fassbender, but that was yeah. literally it. Yeah, Nothing that else. No. But yeah, here Castlevania is really good. Oh, fuck, I, I watched it. that. It's so fucking good. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah. I definitely need more. Yeah. yeah, I think it was like a test run, I hope. Please. I think so. I mean, well, it's it's like it's like a prequel. Because it's only like an hour mm. and 20 minutes total. Yeah, four it's like episodes, four episodes are 20 minutes long. It's so good, though. Holy shit. It was, the animation was really good. I wasn't expecting yeah, it, it to be that like good. It. I think it's because it's like super cool. I wasn't Japanese. expecting it to be that bloody. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's I quite heard gory. Super bloody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like Bloodborne. Is it on Netflix? Yeah, yes, it's a Netflix produced. It's Netflix yeah. produced. Netflix. Yeah, Netflix produced it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So it's basically wow. an English. Yeah, ne- anime. Netflix is pretty hit or miss. So yeah, lately. But this one's been, really yeah. good. This one's really good. Yeah. This one's good. I think it's because it's like, um, it has the uh, Japanese style animations, which is always fucking mm-hmm. beautiful, regardless of yeah. whether the story is good or not, right? As long as long as and, you put the money into it, it's beautiful. Yes, but it doesn't <laughs> yeah, have exactly. the shitty anime style storytelling. Mm-hmm. It's made by Madhouse. <laughs> it it doesn't have that. I like. Madhouse. I'm gonna fight you, but Castlevania? let's talk about the thing that happened 20 years ago for some reason. Yeah. I heard the guy who 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 wrote it, who made sure it. Basically, the guys that that Netflix were like, okay, make this. I I heard I could be wrong. Someone can correct me, but I heard he's been trying to get this off the ground for a mm. while. Adi so Adi I Shankar, think, I think. No. Yeah. I, so this isn't or like something that was just thrown at him. I think he like finally Netflix allowed him to like get this off hmm. the ground. So I think this has been in the works for a while, and so which is good because it means someone who cares made it, which is always the problem. People who don't care make these things. It's bad. That <laughs> is one of the reasons I wanted to see the Valerian before hearing mm. all the bad reviews. Yeah. Is that reading things about it, the people who made it really cared about it. Like, they've been trying to make it for so long. It's like a huge passion mm. project for them. It's like, well, yeah, you're done, Yeah, I heard it's goofed. just awful. Yeah, I heard the <laughs> setting's beautiful. I just heard the characterization exactly. and the script was awful. Is that is that basically... Yep. That's exactly okay. what I hear. Mm. What uh, what company animated Castlevania? Uh, production Houses, is Fed- Frederator Studios, Powerhouse oh, Frederator, Animation right. Studios, Shankar Animation, Project 51 Productions, MOA Film. Okay. No, the, the reason, Fo, the reason I brought up Madhouse is just because it's like a high production 
quality. They're always quality. Studio. Everything I've seen by yeah. Madhouse is like my yeah. favorite. Yeah, every time I see something, I'm like, this is gorgeous. I love watching all the action, and it's Madhouse, and I'm like, of course it's Madhouse. <laughs> they did Paprika, right? Madhouse did Paprika. Oh, that's yes. I think I did hear that. That's one of the reasons people were so excited for for Castlevania. That's right. <laughs> Forgot about that. <sighs> But Madhouse yeah. didn't do Castlevania, though. Right. Right. Have any of you guys heard of a game called Black Ice? I know no. the uh, Key and Peele skit called Black Ice. <laughs> yes. No, I know that. That's my not first thought as well. <laughs> no, um, it's, a, it's a game that was actually featured at RTX, which I went to. Which, I mean, it, that's old news. It's like It was like a couple of weeks ago, but still. But is it fake um, news? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> So what's Black Ice? <laughs> okay, Black Ice is this game where you're playing as a hacker and you're trying to hack into all these different companies and stuff. And oh. you it's it's a different it's a different style. It's it's a oh, first person kind of shooter ice. style kind of thing. And you can unlock different abilities and hacking tools and whatnot. Um, and you're in an environment that like you're in cyberspace essentially like you have a little dude in cyberspace right. and you can run like around Mega Man. and there's like these big black boxes um that are representing companies like they're they're like buildings sort of things mm. and they're just dotted throughout the landscape and they're different levels of difficulty um and you just go around and you activate your hacking tool and then bad guys will start spawning up and you have to fight off the um anti-hacking software and eventually AKA just hack ice. the... In- <laughs> right, exactly. And eventually hack everything. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's pretty fast-paced. There's online multiplayer. Um, I- oh, cool. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool. I think it's I think it's still, like, an early access yeah, game. Like, they're, they're still adding stuff to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so they're, oh, they're constantly adding stuff to it. And, like, I, that's actually one of the devs that I'm following on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and he's a he's a cool dude. Like I met him there in person, and it was it was neat. I was just I wasn't sure if any of you guys had heard of it. Just trying to think of discussion topics. Borderlands mm-hmm. meets yeah. Tron. Yeah, <laughs> that. So basically, those words are the perfect loot. ones. Lots mm-hmm. of loot and lots like, of loot. Skill tree stuff, I guess. Uh. It has the tag I'm not RPGs. Sure about skill so. tree. Yeah, no, like, basically what happens is you get loot drops, and there's different quality of loot drops, of course. Mm. Um, and then, depending on which which thing you think is going to be better, just like in Borderlands, you get all kinds of different guns. But the loot drops in this game is insane. Mm. Like, you're constantly running out of inventory space, oh, and it's, it's, it, it becomes like, oh man, what, what do I, what do I mm. want? You don't have to pick up everything. You If you can... Um, <laughs> When there's a drop, there's like a little cube and it's a color, mm. and you can see from the color right away if it's going to be like a higher, better, uh, a better quality have. item mm. or a less. Right. So you can be like, nah, I'm not going to pick up that common item. <laughs> but we all know we're going to pick it up anyways. Sell it, <laughs> yeah, because you can you go sell it. Can we sell it? <laughs> That's always my problem. Sell it for $1. Uh, speaking of uh, two uh, things that you don't imagine to see in a video game as an RPG and hacking, um, so I tried out playing Consortium the other day. Um, hey, sh- hey, nice. Yes. I should say I tried recording it and it didn't work, <laughs> but oh. that's a different story. Is it because of the I engine, think- I'm guessing? I think it's because it doesn't. I don't really understand why it would stop recording, but I kept getting. So I think I messed up in my settings because. But when I first started the game, it my firewall came up, and so I said no. I'll protect, don't do anything, because I didn't really understand, but I think it needs, I think then I blocked, like, the internet connection on it, because my, um, when I, when I start playing, I kept hearing my computer going off in the background, and, um, I basically found out that, like, it was going in and out, like, it, like, was blinking in, and so my, my video files were practically useless, because it was just making, like, a bunch of five-second clips for some reason, I don't know what happened, but yeah, recording games wise, is it like, was a disaster. Certain games, for some reason, makes it really difficult to record. <laughs> yeah, it was just a disaster. But like, yeah. I think it needs constant internet connection, and I'm not sure if it was quite getting that because I was getting the. Hmm. Um, if for That's people it. who don't know, Consortium is basically 
there's I don't know much about the story, but basically they say that you we have technology where we are going to put you in the mind of someone from 2042 and we need your help in solving a mystery basically. And so the idea is that, you know, you are inhabiting this body from the future and so they need some constant internet connection and I I think if they don't always get it then like things start to get kind of fuzzy on your end. So, like, I was getting a lot of, like, like feedback, it looked like. Like, think the connection wasn't good. I don't know if that was just an effect or if that was real. I need to check my settings. Um, I tried recording. It didn't work. I, which I'm kind of glad because now I don't, I don't really want to record it because it's, there's a lot to this game. <laughs> like, I started playing it and I got really lost. Like, not in a bad way, just overwhelmed. Like, you go to one mm. of your first computer terminals and there are at least 20 different emails for you to read right off the bat. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, can you spread these There's out? It's a job simulator. It's an office God, job yeah, simulator. It's, I was like, what the? And, and you ca- in a way, you kind of, I, I didn't really read them through because I was recording. I wasn't going to read them through. But you kind of need to because I think I've already, like, messed it yes. up. Um, because, yep. like, in the be- beginning, I, I, qu- I, it, I didn't have the... Um, the subtitles and so I was and because of the connection and stuff and I was distracted with my computer I didn't quite hear what the lady was saying and so I was reacting weirdly to her and so she wanted me to go down to the um to get myself checked out by the medic bay which if you answer correctly you probably don't get that choice and I did go down there and I did the option and they were like oh let us check you out and I saw on the top they're like they're going to know that something is wrong or something like that and I was like uh oh and so they, they could tell they're like why is it like you have two brains in your body? And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I've been caught. <laughs> so, you know, that, that part was interesting. So yeah, I need to like really take time to sink into it. I thought it was going to be a really quick game. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's. I mean, not. it's quick. It can be quick if you just want to get to an end. Right. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the only thing I think I'm not going to like about it is the combat system. I did the sim. There's a, basically uh, you can practice a simulation of the combat. And I was like, oh, 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 <laughs> oh my! Yeah. So that was that was interesting. Um, but it's it's what I really do like about it is it feels very alive and it feels very much like oh I need to be very careful. Like something's it's pretty gonna... fully realized. Yeah. So I'm kind of so I'm I'm gonna play it myself and really sink into. It. I'm probably gonna start over so I can actually read through those stupid emails because <laughs> those are probably. Are you those going are... to record it or just play through it? I'm just going to play through it because I couldn't, yeah. when I tried to record it, I, I don't know what happened, but it didn't work. <laughs> yep. Okay, so. I have a theory why that game needs constant internet connection, okay? Plot twist. This is all <laughs> yeah. real life, and the FBI is investigating the CIA, <laughs> and they're using video game players <laughs> to I get just like the idea information the on the CIA. the CIA. I just like that part. <laughs> it's like, what the... <laughs> Well, I mean, it's always the CIA against the FBI. Let's let's flip it around a little bit. It's true. It's true. What about the NSA? No one ever talks about the NSA, though. <laughs> let's just throw them in there. That, that they're they're the weird uncle in the corner. You know, it's, it's all good. <laughs> yes, they are. It's a sad part. Oh, jeez. I'm curious to see exactly. I think that they're uploading. I think it's because they're uploading data, like choices, choices. that users are making. That's what I'm guessing they're doing. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. So you can um, compare. I mean, but you, I, can, you can do that like at the end, or like Telltale. Like how Telltale what, does it, right? Well, Telltale yeah. does actually have it in between now. Well, Batman, they yeah, do. They guess, that's actually yeah. was that was one of the problems with Batman. Actually, as much as I actually quite like the Telltale Batman game, it got kind of laggy because they were constantly trying to like update hmm. your choices compared hmm. to the internet. So it kind it kind of some parts of it got kind of laggy with the cloud and stuff. Um, I'd rather just is, wait until the end of the episode that you're playing. Yeah, you know? in Batman yep. they don't or just in ba- take the data from the save game in the cloud. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you no, can, exactly. Yeah, yeah. In, in Batman, you can turn it off. I, I just remember, but they have that in there as default, where it does keep uploading to the cloud. <laughs> and usually, they do that in between scenes, and you can tell because there's a little cloud symbol when it's black because they're changing scenes. The problem is that almost always when they would open up to the next scene. A lot of glitchiness with the graphics for a first couple of seconds, <laughs> and it's fine. Oh, <laughs> We're like okay, gross. <laughs> All right, Telltale. I don't remember <laughs> if that's regular or not. Oh, this is this was in Batman, yeah, yeah. so I think Got this it. is something new that they're doing. Um, but oh, no, PSA. I'm interested. To- Just a little thing. Uh, right now, there's a humble bundle for a deep sil- silver bundle, bunch of like the Saints Row games and like Homefront and mm. Mighty Number no. Nine mm-hmm. for some reason. So, <laughs> a bunch of games, and that bundle because usually what you can do is you can buy like the one dollar tier wait for the beat 
the average games to come out and then decide if you want to like you know upgrade by just spending the uh, whatever extra money so let's say if i let's say if the uh, bid the average tier is five bucks right now i pay one buck first and it sort of locks in that five bucks and then when i want to unlock it i just need to pay an extra four dollars and one cent kind of thing you can mm-hmm. you cannot do that with this bundle so just you know mm. it's annoying Good to know. <laughs> but yeah comment um, comment but yeah concern is interesting i need to check my settings because even if like i don't record my computer keeps making noises that like something stopped recording and had to re-record and i don't know if that was just because of obs or because of the internet connection thing i still don't i still mm. don't understand why obs didn't record it well it was very strange i don't know why it was doing that but that was whatever <laughs> that's its um, own thing did you update OBS recently? Because I've noticed I never had any problems with OBS streaming. And then suddenly, very recently, whenever I update OBS, it changes, like, all, all of my settings. So, like, a bunch of default stuff. Like, my mm. bitrate goes from 1500 to 2500 and I'm like, Jesus, i got to turn that down. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's that. I've never had this problem before. Um, and this was, and I, I have, I, I, when I, when I uh, recorded for the Cinderella game, I didn't have any problems at all. I think it's just something about how it, because when I do OBS, um, anyway, but I, I think it just isn't reading it, the fact that it's on or something, so something's just off. I bet, I'm mm. wondering if I did instead that it captures the screen, not the game, if it would work better. That's what I Nah, some Batman. games is just difficult to record because for whatever, <laughs> whatever reason, they didn't optimize the game engine or they made their yeah. own game engine and they really suck at it. Right. W- whatever reason. So. That, it, it's not, it, it usually happens with indie games because yeah. yep. they lack the technical skill, probably. Right. Um, but to- anyway, talking, so- about, talking about games that We've played recently that are games that came out a few years ago because this podcast is super recent and relevant. <laughs> um, I've been playing Red Faction Armageddon for some reason. Hmm. Oh. Had that game for years and only now started <laughs> playing it. It's the fourth <laughs> game in the series. It's the follow-up to everybody's favorite in the series, Red Faction Gorilla, which is the third game. Cat. And Sorry. It's okay. Cat. Um, he stole my headset too. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, okay. Ray Faction Armageddon. Back. It's not a bad game. It's pretty solid. But the third game, basically, what the third game did was is like fully destructible environments in an open world setting. Mm-hmm. Super fun. Okay. The fourth game is fucking linear as shit. Still oh. has the destructible environments and all that, but it's like linear now. So that's the that's basically the biggest step back that they took. But it's still a pretty solid game. You can't you can't go from open world to linear. Like you can't yeah. do that. It's probably a budget <laughs> problem. I'm guessing. Yeah. It's probably yeah. a budget problem. Maybe the third game was like a cult classic kind of thing, because it was a really fun game. Like you had you had this unlimited like sticky mines. That you can just plant everywhere <laughs> and you can put like 14 at a time and then just see everything explode. It's so fun. <laughs> Seriously, go play that game. Uh, but yeah, the fourth game, it's not, it's not bad. But if, if that was the third game and the third game was the fourth game, it would be better. <laughs> if you get what I mean? Yeah. Because it was literally a step back. Yeah. <laughs> Once you go open world, you never go back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I really like a um, current gen destructible environment kind of game. Mm-hmm. Felt like the PS3, sometimes PS2 did it more than like the current gen for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, I also watched Attack on Titan 2. Oh. oh, all of it? Nice. Yeah, all of it. There was like thir- 12 or 13 episodes. Um, That was like, I watched that after Castlevania and and like back to back on the same day I just finished both series oh, my God. <laughs> oh wow good day oh jeez <laughs> so long blood. as day long as day on my ass watching <laughs> Japanese people <laughs> shouting things and stuff so um, it, before watching that b- before watching Castlevania and Attack on Titan I haven't watched an anime for a really long time after watching Attack on Titan 2 I kind of remember why I haven't been watching anime <laughs> You gotta watch yeah. good ones. You gotta watch yeah. good ones. <laughs> That's the thing. Attack on Titan is considered a good one, right? But it's I, not. Uh, it's not to say it's not bad or good. Season, not bad. The thing is, it's not to say it's bad from anime standards or good in anime standards. It's the anime standards that I couldn't stand. Like, 
can yeah. understand that. Yeah. Like every episode, like, they focus on different characters, different the, the backstory. Sort of really popular, and I hate it. Yeah, like like I understand they want to gi- give all these side characters like more. They want to flesh them out. They want to give them backstories. Like every almost every episode. Pad, pad, and <laughs> and Yelly. oh my god. The main yeah. character is so fucking useless. Like he's a fucking piece of shit. Useless. He's good in season one. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't watch enough to get to him in season two. I mean, in season one, he was like, "Ah, oh, I'm so angry. I'm gonna turn into a titan and get my face punched in." What's the point? I guess that's true. As a titan, he was bad. <laughs> like, oh, just because you can turn into a titan, I'll... fuck you. It's, so it's not like a like limit break Final Shinji. Fantasy shit. What? He goes like full Shinji, like I don't want to turn into oh a Titan. Oh my god! No, it's Only like Evangelion can get away with that. Only that anime. <laughs> no, he's it just like really constantly angry it. and like that, that's literally I his see. only character. Like he's super one dimensional. Like he's always angry. Like that's sure. it. Sure. I'm I'm never not angry. <laughs> that's that's I think my everyone's thing. Everyone's favorite character it. is um, who's the captain's name? Like his leader, Levi. leader of the. Uh, is it Levi? You're talking about Levi? Levi, yeah, yeah. The really Levi. good Everyone one, right? Everyone likes Levi. Right, right. Because he's just like the, the, like the aloof kind of emo yeah. guy. So if he doesn't say too much, he can't be stupid, right? You just assume <laughs> he's cool. <laughs> as long as you don't open his dang mouth. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just... I just got really... I think that's why I stopped watching anime. I just got really tired of the tropes, the one-dimensional characters, the that's constant fair. padding with backstories and shit. Oh, back then I wasn't good. Yes, we know you weren't good. I want to know what's happening now. Like... Most of the good animes tell a complete story like in one or two seasons, and it's kind of done. Mm. Like the yeah, multiple yeah. seasonal animes, usually, usually there are a number of exceptions, aren't as good. Would you say yeah. those good animes that one two season thing is because they're not based on a manga, or I are don't every know. or is every anime based on a manga? I assume I, uh, this is completely mean. I've no data to back this up, but I assume it's kind of like what we were talking about earlier, where whenever you're producing something. It's like a mix between what sells and what the story you want to tell. And when you have like the hope or the goal of having a very long running thing, you're more motivated by what sells. But when you have a very self encapsulated short thing, you're kind of just telling the story you want to tell. And yeah. it's less like um, twisted. Can yeah. somebody please tell me an anime to watch that has very little of these tropes and like fucking padding and bullshit? Steins Gate? Oh, Academia. I've heard it's no, really good. No, 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 <laughs> really? no. Really? Whoa. Really? The main Whoa. character of my Can hero still be friends? is worse I don't than know. Shinji. He <laughs> cries every episode. He literally <laughs> bursts into tears. He's every growing. Episode. He's growing. He's growing as a character, though. Oh, He's changing over time. He's getting wait, wait, better. Wait, wait, wait. Is it a comedy? Is the crying terrible. for comedic Maybe. effect? No. No. Oh. It's for dramatic effect. Oh. Oh my god. Okay, he doesn't sound like Mickey Mouse. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Shard, try Steins Gate. Uh, Steins okay, Gate's okay. Uh, here's, here's a personal theory, because I've recently started getting back into the anime game, because I found placement. some that are bearable to watch that are, like, yeah. interesting. Yes, okay. yeah. bearable. And I've, I've, seen, I've seen a fair amount. But it's sort of like, it's just an anime thing for them to be yeah. overdramatic at certain points, to be a little sure. cheesy at certain points, Padding. to have like a little bit of fan service yeah. going on. Like, yeah. it's just, it's just the nature of anime. The yeah. same with um, what I've noticed with American TV and, and like TVs and movie shows. A lot of it is really hard for me to stomach anymore because it's the same bullshit that the mm. characters rotate through over and over. Like, oh, it was all just a misunderstanding. If we had had simple communication, this whole thing could have been avoided. But no, <laughs> the girl sees the yeah. guy talking to this other chick That's and just worst. flies off the handle. Oh, my God, you were cheating on me. Blah, 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 blah. And instead of asking the guy about it, just makes all these grandiose <laughs> what assumptions. What are you watching? <laughs> like any, oh, yeah. any American yeah. show, dude. It's, like yeah. pretty it's much true, everything. Though. Ugh, yeah, and it's, it's and it's not just that trope, but there's others too that are just like what? Because movie, because plot yeah. device, because yeah. we have to have something for them to fight about and rather than having a three-dimensional character that has like multiple sides and it's certain sides of these characters that are not meshing and well. This is let's why just have a the Castlevania Netflix one is really good. I feel like there was like almost no tropes almost. Mm. Like they would okay. like the characters are actual people characters type you know like it's mm-hmm. yeah. it feels real the interactions i think and the you decisions. might like psychopaths is pretty good i i want to watch the rest really of that i've started I watching watch it. it's really good is that um, a one punch man is another one it's kind mm. of is there a what is psychopaths gory 
It's a well, little gory. I, I don't think it's extremely dark. so. It's dark, but it's not like extremely. Oh, yeah. it's a detective thing, right? It's not like Gantz. Kind of. Yeah, it's yeah. a detective thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I think I'm thinking of something else. I think I'm thinking of Gantz. Parasite something. Oh, oh, Parasite Eve? No, Parasite Eve's a video game. Um, there Parasite is a Parasite. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if that was based on an anime. <laughs> No, par- parasite. I don't know anything there, about it. There, there is a parasite something that's an anime. That I, I, you're right. Yeah, I've never parasite seen it, but I spelled think it with a really, Y instead of an I. Yeah, I think right? it is really, Clever. really gory. If yeah, I remember correctly. Because it's like yeah. aliens inhabiting like human bodies and shit or something. Like yeah, that, that sounds oh, I, like. I, I hate those kinds of stories. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so why should I watch something one that's like two seasons or something? I mean, One Punch Man is good. Moby one Psycho, uh, Bebop, guy. Samurai Champloo. Do you ever watch Full Metal Alchemist? Yeah, for my uh, I watched oh. the. Um, there's two, right? I watched. Yeah, there's two. Yeah, yeah. there's not good one. And not apparently, they're not good one. Apart- apparently. I did the exact same thing as you. Yeah, because I, I like. Because I still liked it though. I liked, Yeah, it I like the good. original as well. I haven't seen Brotherhood yet though. I've heard it's amazing. Yeah, because I went on like one of the anime the subreddits <laughs> and I was like, this was right after I watched Avatar, um, and I was like, uh, please somebody tell me an anime or something that would you know just because I'm craving for something good after watching Avatar because well, it's like literally right. the best thing I've ever watched. Fuck if that. If you don't mind a long thing, Hajime no Ippo is like my all-time favorite. Mm, the boxing one, right? Yeah, the boxing one. How long is long? Mm. Five seasons Uh, The first, so it's three seasons, but the first season's like 70 episodes. Fuck. And then seasons <laughs> two and three are the normal like right, 12. 20, sorry, right, right. Or 20 what? or 24, whatever they are. 70? Holy shit. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> oh, jeez. To be fair, it has like an anime where somebody grows. To be fair, one of my favorite animes about... is like fifty episodes the first seasons, which I still enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to talk about gory animes, Elfin Lead uh, and Blue yeah. Gender. I know those I know are that intense. One. What's the second one? Blue Gender. Blue Gender. The, but no but the, okay. Um, I'm just saying it's gory. I'm not saying it's good. Um, <laughs> okay. I watched it. I watched it a long time ago, and Baffles. I just remember. It was very confusing, and the main character was a crybaby, just, like, constantly afraid of everything, and, like, just... I don't I don't even remember why I watched the show. I think it just happened to be on when, like, nothing else was on, and I was like, what? I'll, I'll watch it, I guess. I'll see where this is going. Maybe, maybe the main character will have some um, moment of crisis and come through stronger, or, like, change... Never really happened. <laughs> it was really <laughs> frustrating. Up until the last episode, just the whole time, just like, what the fuck? <laughs> if you That's wanna... pretty much what that anime is. <laughs> if, if you want a real mind-screw, horror, psychological, what-the-crap anime, I would highly recommend Paranoia Agent, which I tried watching oh, yes. when I... Oh my gosh, that anime used to give me nightmares. And I, I tried watching it when I was like, thir- like 14 with my brother <laughs> so... and... Oh, oh gosh. The only reason I watched that anime is because uh, Susumi Hirozawa does the soundtrack. And he did like Paprika and uh, Millennium Actress and all the animes I like. So the, I really the, the, it's been the, so weird. The intro still gives me like flashbacks because it, it's like, it, like it's, it's like triggering for me. It's just like, no. It's a I bunch remember. of people like grinning at the camera super. It's so <laughs> creepy. Like after you uh, watch a single, like is that when you first see the intro, you're like, oh, this is just kind of weird. Okay, that's not bad. And then after that, like. After you've seen, because I remember I was with my boyfriend and we were at a convention. There was some random panel that was like top ten best anime intros or something, and he's never seen. Oh, um, I wouldn't put that. Paranoid thing. Agent. This was like five years later since I've last seen Paranoid Agent, and I heard the music and I went, "No, <laughs> no!" We're not and they show her like, "No, no!" <laughs> and my boyfriend's like, "What's wrong? Like, you don't understand. This is giving me flashbacks. It's so creepy." <laughs> I don't want to watch anyway. shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in the mood. I didn't Maybe recommend Paranoia months. Agent. Yeah, it's months. definitely weird, though. <laughs> it's an experience. It's not Ooh. bad. Another good Fully... one is Fully Cooly. Yeah, that one's Fully good. Fully Cooly. <laughs> That's a weird one, though. It's another yeah, really weird really one. Sure. No, it's like six episodes. Less tropes, I guess. That's yeah, six, no, tropes? six episodes, and it makes less you go, tropes. what the fuck? That's but like at the weird. same time, you're just encapsulated oh, in this world and yeah. wondering like where is this also, going they're making just, a second one right it's they, yeah reboot. yeah is no adult swim is, yes no yeah. this is true adult swim is funding a, a second season of it and it's like what i i don't know why i don't it doesn't need one it. It does I, where need is one. it gonna go it's over i don't know it's, it's <laughs> done it's done it's yeah, probably gonna be a prequel. different characters oh, prequel. it's gonna it's hmm. just it's not gonna be good 
<laughs> it's very it's, weird, though. Like, will it be fully or will it be coolly? We don't know yet. <laughs> I think I should <laughs> really watch Bebop. I think I watched like the first three or four episodes. Bebop and Trigun are like, two of the classics. Oh, I love Trigun. Like, Cowboy, Cowboy and Bebop. Bebop. Cowboy Bebop? Cowboy, yeah. I still yeah. didn't watch Cowboy Bebop. Ooh, um, the original Dragon Ball. Not Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> but the original the Dragon Ball. The one when Goku's still a, a kid. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I watched that when yeah. I was a kid. Ooh. Also watched Doraemon Even... a lot back then. It was my <laughs> shit. I was... I- I was the weirdo who watched less Dragon Ball and, and more Roroni Kenshin. I was that weirdo. <laughs> to be fair, I, I think Roroni Samurai Kenshin. X is a better anime, <laughs> just overall. <laughs> I just think Roroni it's better. Kenshin. Yeah. Oh, man. That was really so good. good. <laughs> yeah. So good. It's so good. It's so Gotta find some stuff to watch because, oh, <sighs> Eternal on Titan really pissed the shit out of me. Oh, another <laughs> one um, is Blue Exorcist. It's I interesting. Think, is it good? I was curious about it. There's a lot of. I um, enjoyed it. Sector. It has a lot of voice actors I really like, so I was also curious about it. I was like, oh, I know these guys. <laughs> um, and watch the dub. A good movie hmm. put out by Madhouse is Redline. Redline's amazing. I don't I like the know, ending. Like, it's weird. But... It's like, I don't know that I can call it a good movie per se, but it's like the most fun movie, period. Like, yeah, just watch yeah that exactly. Movie, like, I just went on a roller coaster for two hours. Let's do it again. <laughs> Sci fi <laughs> no, exactly. and, and, and racing anime? Yeah, it's yeah. like what so like, it was put out in 2009. It was put out in 2009. Like, kinda, but more yeah. sci-fi. Mm. But like, okay, like it's so good. The, what's what's the whole point of a movie over t- TV show? It's to, it's entertainment. To tell like a Trailer story? Park Boys, Depends the production the value is, is shit, right? Trailer Park Boys was not is not known for their special effects and everything like that, but it's still incredibly entertaining to watch. Redline, not known for their massively detailed like backstory on all these characters. It's just fast-paced, really fun to watch. But you, if you're smiling and you're like, you know what? I'm glad I spent that one and a half, two hours, three hours watching whatever it is you just watched. I mean, that's a win right there. Yeah, as, as, as far as I'm good. concerned. Yeah, yeah exactly. if you walk away happy, that you didn't feel like you wasted your time, they, they've done For, their job. I, I'm not disagreeing with that. But because, I'm, because a movie meets that criteria where I'm happy and I watched it, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good movie. Like, I would never call The Room a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with you. I, I'm totally in agreement, but I'm just saying, so long as you walk yes, away happy. Is. That's a different kind of happy. I think that is just, like, <laughs> that is, like, disbelief repressed. Like, I can't understand what happened, so I'm going to just assume I'm happy. That's a different experience, I think. Confusion oh, hi, defaults to happy. <laughs> How's your sex life? <laughs> <laughs> yep. So the second season yep. of the Castlevania one will be eight episodes, and will be coming out next year. Mm. Next eight. year. Mm. So then it's gonna be sixteen, <laughs> and then thirty-two. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. No, no, but it's so no. good though. Holy shit! I love the. I have to watch it myself. I feel weird watching it because, like, I don't have an attachment to Castlevania. You don't but, like, need. Can't... You don't. But I, you, you don't need it though. And yeah. so I'm like, I should though, because it's it's really good, and I want to support <laughs> good things. <laughs> it's like watching an anime without reading the manga. You don't really need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I heard. I heard you really don't need it. Oh, you can watch oh, Berserk. Don't need really, really, yeah. Yeah. Berserk. Yeah, I've heard that's interesting. <laughs> I don't Hello, know. Berserk. I wouldn't recommend it to everybody, but I think Shar would like Berserk. <laughs> What does that mean? Another Susume Hirosawa <laughs> soundtrack film. I really enjoyed um, Devil's a Part-Timer, but I only but there's only one season. Yeah. Devil's yeah. a Part-Timer. I know that one. Why do I know that one? I really like it's that. It's pretty it good one. Here. It's a it's a satire, so it's good. Maybe I just um, heard there's about one, it. There's one that's actually it's actually kind of topical to this podcast, I guess. It's called No Game No Life, and I it's about that. a brother sister who get pulled into a mm. dimension where it's a fancy ish setting and the god of games is like the god so uh games are used ubiquitously to determine everything like um we're gonna play rock paper scissors the winner has to obey the other one for a day and that is and that becomes a fact like because of the magic of the realm if you lose that game you are compelled to satisfy the conditions that you agreed upon beforehand so these two this brother sister combo who mm-hmm. were amazing at video games get pulled into this world where everything's decided, decided by games and they start like, cleaning up because humans are like they're like the lowest class like angels and like elves are all mm-hmm. like these prestigious things and so he starts like kind of just taking over the world by winning games against these like champions of each race huh. it's a uh, it's good but um 
there's a bit it's, it's there's some episodes that are almost too anime like there's definitely Very fan service-y. some incest oh, okay. tones <gasps> between the brother and sister mm, nothing, nothing nice. happens but there's some Implied. weird stuff so it's not great <laughs> off screen I, really yeah. I hate that stuff I have an older brother yeah. so I hate that stuff so much <laughs> gosh yeah Reminds you play me games of with incest right no no. No, no, Sarah. <laughs> what game? <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> okay, no, I haven't finished Fire Emblem, so I cannot confirm Yeah, that game is my fucking uh, incest <laughs> strategy RPG, deny. whatever. Uh, I cannot confirm or not deny. Incest I just, I'm, I'm just worried it is. <laughs> That's it. There's a difference. <laughs> oh, jeez. Nah, man. I'm so... Ugh. Gosh. No nah, man. Reminds me of when my brother like I haven't finished Gravity Falls, but I want to mostly because like my brother got into mm. it, and I have this problem where if you if you good. were in the room when you introduce something to me, I have to see it with you. Like I can't see it oh. by myself. I'm really bad about that. So if you want to introduce mm. me to something, you need to like force me to watch it, then walk away from the room. Otherwise, okay. like. I'm a weird lost puppy. So I haven't finished Gravity Falls because I started watching it with my brother. And obviously it's a story of, you know, for those who don't know, it is a story about two twins, a brother and a sister. And the way that they portray their relationship is really cool. And I'm very close with my with my older brother, and so it's really cool to see it portrayed. But it's super creepy because freaking weirdos pair them and ship them. And I'm like, no, <laughs> stop it. It's a lot like Steven Universe and Overwatch. There's a lot of creepy fan art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Steven Apparently too, there are so people gender swapping the uh, Dream Daddy characters. Oh, what geez. a surprise. I'm not surprised. <laughs> and um, apparently some people are not happy with that. Yeah. I wonder why. No way. Hmm. No, I mean, it's oh like gender swapping is not really a new thing, right? <laughs> it's just like no, not at all. Been around not at for all. millennia, a eons. Yeah, I, I've never considered that as a... I, I just like, eh. The only time I ever get kind of weirded out by it, and there's only one form of media I can imagine that did this. And so this, this is the only time I find gender swapping weird. When you have a, when you try to gender swap so that you can make it that you have two people. No, I'm actually talking about Sherlock Holmes. Elementary, which is the, uh, they mm-hmm. made them like an American Sherlock Holmes. They yeah. made Watson a female, Lucy simply Lou. so that yeah. they could ship them together. So like so they could have romantic tension between them too. Right. That to I me prefer, is a little weird. <laughs> the, I definitely this isn't like a hard rule, but I prefer my gender swapping to be like universe wide. It's like in the alternate universe where all the characters are yes, swapped. Yes. This is what yes. it's like. This is what it's like. But yeah, like those yeah. kinds of things I think are great. Like I have no problem with those kind of things. I mean um, it's it American is... TV, you need like the uh, romantic tension thing, right? <laughs> it's like it's part I of guess, the formula, yeah. isn't it? Oh, you know what? It is, but yeah, that's why it was just kind of stupid. Because mysteries are hard and confusing. Like... <laughs> <laughs> and of course, some people were, I mean, the other reason people were upset is they're like, well, why did you have to make it that one had to be a female? Why couldn't you have just, as they were, two male characters and still have the romantic tension? You know, so it's just stuff like that. Like, you know just what would be weird... cool? This is absolutely Two gay men on screen? What the fuck are you talking cool? about? Is if they interviewed everybody, like regardless of gender, like, oh, we just happened to cast Lucy Liu because she had a better audition than the other yeah, people yeah, who yeah. auditioned for it. Oh, yeah, no, I would definitely, I would definitely be all for that. I just don't trust them as the problem. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> I just don't. <laughs> so. Yep, yep, yep. It's kind of like, um, it, I mean, that, that happened technically with, uh, in Mass Effect from, apparently, I didn't know this story, but, um, why can't I think of her name? Who plays Female Shepherd? Female Shepherd, what's her name? What's her name? She's Femship. super famous. She's cool. super famous. Why can't I think of her name? Jennifer Hale. Thank you, Google. Mm. Jennifer Hale. Main reason um, that there's a female, apparently, the reason that you could have a, that they originally made a choice because I guess they weren't originally going to make it that you could have a female um, shepherd in that game. And basically, Jennifer Hale heard about the voice acting tryouts. And normally, they were for male. And so she just went, I think I could do a female shepherd. And so she put in her audition in, and they're like, and she sold it well enough that they decided to have two different, you know, options. Apparently. I don't know if that's totally hmm. true, but apparently. Um, so, yeah, definitely. That's a pretty major shift for a game to do to yeah. add a whole separate. The animations and the character design mm-hmm. and the the, 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 story. the thing, it, it, it moves differently in the environment mm-hmm. and like, that's yeah, a so, huge, huge. So I have no idea like what, if this is, this is, I heard this from another voice actor that I was a guest, I was guest handling for at a convention. So I don't know, but that's just, that was just something I had heard. Um, but uh, it's definitely 
It's definitely interesting. I mean, I don't know if this was way early in development. I don't know if this is just Yeah, I, I would only find it plausible if it was way early in the development when they still have enough time to kind of shift right. things around a little bit. It doesn't. Exactly. It doesn't take a lot of shifting, but, but it takes enough shifting. that it. It takes enough shifting yeah. for, especially for a yeah. Bioware game. It does take some decent shifting. So I, I'm still like, really, but I don't know, or maybe I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, in my opinion, Jennifer Hale sells Shepard better than the male Shepard voice actor. But that's just my opinion. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> I thought she was better, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'm but a yeah. Shepard, and I'm my favorite Shepard on the Citadel. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Every fucking time. I love it though. It's Every the best quote time. when you it's, chill. It's like a it's, commercial. It's like, it's like uh, what a hero. <laughs> I'm Commander Shepard. It's my favorite chap on the Citadel. I love that. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. Um, anything else, you guys? I wanted to give a shout out to. Uh, I picked up a new comic this week mm. from. Oh. It's back from 2014, so it's not like brand new. But it's mm. called The Manhattan Projects. And the setting is The Manhattan Project was actually a cover for a bunch of other projects. And it's kind of delves into that. And it gets a bit X Files y. Or oh. not X Files per se. Area 51. It was supernatural thing? stuff. Oh. So, like, the yeah, Area 51 thing. Because, like, there's alien technology being the like, research, trying Ooh. to discover this stuff. Like, okay. at one point, because this is just, this is The Manhattan Project. So, this is mm-hmm. just after, like, Pearl Harbor, the Japanese attack. And they drop in, like, this um, Shinto gate which is powered by Buddhists, and it's a portal, and these, like, these, like, kamikaze robots start running through. So you see, like, Einstein, like, with a minigun is, like, mowing down these kamikaze robots that are invading the Manhattan Project. Like, it's awesome. Are oh <laughs> they, like, Nazis? And it's all, it's with, all like, real people, too, which is cool. Like, Oppenheimer, Nazi uh, experiments. Feynman, like, all these real scientists. Oh, my God. What kind of, yeah, Nazi, you get Nazis come over to work on rockets. Got, are they, uh, su- they all... super buff? <laughs> super just... uh, they're pretty buff, and they Hilarious. have, like, uh, robot arms and stuff. Amazing. It's cool. It's like Venture Bros, but oh, not okay. but very similar, I guess. Yeah, not as crazy, but That's it's good. Fun. So I, I read the first one, and I immediately bought the next five on Amazon. <laughs> so Ooh. I'm reading through those now. Nice. Nice, Let's be nice. Good. Image Comics. Yeah. I love their covers. Mm. Nice. Did you play anything this week? time. Um, I played my normal games. The games on my channel, which are still Even the Ocean uh, and... The other one, I'm thinking the name. Oh, Black the Fall. Black the um, Fall. Black the Fall. Which, the last session, my last recording session, I definitely got stuck for like an hour just trying to get on a bus, and it wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really that hard. So, I don't know. The game's hard, but I think I'm just being dumb. So I don't know. I'm gonna keep playing it though. The story's still pretty good, but it's it's gotten to that point where I can't tell what to do all the time. If you if you if you want to feel not as dumb, when I was playing the, the <laughs> that one visual novel, the Cinderella Phenomenon, I was stuck at an opening screen for about ten minutes because I didn't realize that what they were asking me to do was basically write a name in for the lead character because they have the oh. a, a name they have a name her name's Lucette they have a name picked out but you can backspace it and then write a different name and I didn't realize that's what they were asking me to do so I kept like pressing keys and stuff to continue because of the way that the screen was laid out it wasn't obvious to me that that's what they were trying to go for i even looked online oh, no. to try to be like how do i get past <laughs> the opening screen and i couldn't figure it out until finally i until finally i happened to press something else and then i actually I actually saved and then like reloaded because i thought something was wrong and then i realized oh <laughs> i see now I, so i'm it's having okay. a bit of that problem as well sometimes right where i have my my level of confidence in the game is low enough that I can't always tell when I'm like legit stuck or if there's a bug in the game. Oh, I, I don't know that I've encountered a full on like blocking bug yet, but I've definitely seen like minor bugs, so I'm, I'm never sure if I'm stuck yeah. because of a bug or not. Well, that's a hard part for me at any kind of like point and click game. Like this happened when I was playing Kathy Rain, actually. I unfortunately, when I finished it up for the last time, um, I finished the game, but I did have to look their walkthrough twice, which is more than actually I'd had mm. to for pretty much the whole game. It's been, they're pretty good about logically figuring what you're supposed to do next but i couldn't i just couldn't like understand like what am i doing here i'm missing something and i you know i don't know what i'm supposed to be missing thankfully the the clue that i had to go on the walkthrough for did not like i was pretty good about not spoiling it and so it was like Mm. i just need like a hint like 
what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I kind of, I sometimes like in Needles for Games, we're like, I don't need you to tell me the answer. I just need to know like yes. what frame of reference am I supposed to have? Because Universal I, hint system. Yes, a good I hint wish system. they. I wish Universal hint uh, systems had more for for other games. They have great ones for Phoenix Wright, which I'm so grateful for hmm. because they they tried mm-hmm. for the the Phoenix Wright games, and it's great because those are ones especially where you're like. Don't tell me what it is. That's gonna be the just, answer. Just, just a little nudge. Just, just a little nudge. Just, just, like, just a little. <laughs> yeah. What direction am I supposed to be thinking here? Because some of these things are weird. Just the you faintest know? breeze. Just... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and those things like have saved my life for years. Um, but like they don't have it for a lot of other games. It's really frustrating. <laughs> Wish they would. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also played up too much Diablo three. <laughs> 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 I got two characters to seventy, and I'm going through the. Um, like end game, not raid content, but like I guess the end game content. Mm. So that's fun enough. Playing with people, which just makes it more fun, I guess. Mm. But yeah, I think that's all I played. I tried to play Gigantic, but it didn't work. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously fun though. Yeah. So yeah, we were talking about incest mm. right just now. So <laughs> there's this oh, article boy. about this <laughs> oh, small no. little town. In I think Arizona or somewhere, and Uh-oh. they practice polygamy, and they are f- mm-hmm. literally facing genetic disaster be- because all their kids are physically and mentally disabled. Because oh jeez, because they're in bread. Oh, because of the the in thing, I guess. Where did you say this was? No. I think it's Arizona. a small town in Arizona. Arizona I yeah. reminds it's me like something of a... out of a uh, preacher. <laughs> It, re- it reminds and the preacher me of- comic has stuff like that. oh oh okay Sorry. it reminds me of an, an a different issue that people were talking about where there was this one guy that um he was donating his sperm to sperm banks but like he was one- I don't know why he was like one of the only donators but like his has been used for oh. a lot to the point that like <laughs> they there were some concerns about like if he were to sire children that may meet up later in life and not realize it kind of thing <laughs> so I'm like that's I think old. there's wow. a movie loosely based off of that. Starring like Vince Vaughn or somebody. I'm not surprised. It's also an episode. It was also an episode on House. <laughs> it's a uh, uh, it's a, a small episode. town on the uh, Arizona Utah border known as Short Creek. Hmm. Guess what religion like they are? Mormon. Yeah. Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know? No fool. I should have guessed. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's interesting. Well, I, I guess. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I. Because literally, like, because one guy has multiple wives, so every other man had to go out to find wives, and they never came no. back or something like that. So that's oh, mission. No. shit like that happened. So, you yeah. took all the women, literally. literally. <laughs> one of my <laughs> one of my favorite episodes of Portlandia is they are at like a restaurant. And like, is this chicken local? Oh, <laughs> we gotta go check on the chicken. So they actually drive out to the farm and check on the chicken. And it turns out the farm's like a commune. And when they see the farmer, his personality is just so magnetic. They end up like staying at the farm for two years until he like dies and the spell breaks. I'm like, what? What? Are, what are we doing here? Like, we were at a restaurant. <laughs> and they go into the restaurant, like, okay, let's hit the chicken. So that's the whole thing. <laughs> like, it's, what? It's just this great, what like, this? aside. Where this, uh, Portlandia. Oh. I, thought, I thought this was something that actually happened. I thought you were telling no. me news. Oh, okay. I mean, I was very have. concerned. <laughs> it, seems, like, it probably could happen. Who knows why people join communes in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> For chickens? Well, is this a farm? My point still stands. Anyway, do we have any video game related news? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... <laughs> any video game related incest, Char? <laughs> My emblem. <laughs> Just wait till I finish Sarah's this Fire Emblem game yeah. and I'll let you know. <laughs> and all the vision novels Sarah's playing. <laughs> Literally. Uh, actually, no, no. Actually, the, the Cinderella phenomenon, I know one of the... I don't know if it's romantic or not, but I know one of the options of the guys is what is your stepbrother. I mean, no, yeah, no yeah. blood relation, but it's still kind of weird. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the ending, but I know he's one of the like routes, and so I'm like, 
<laughs> Why? It's a step brother, <laughs> though, so it doesn't. Is that one of the? It's not as choices bad. It's like still bad decision, wrong decision, bad. <laughs> <laughs> bad decision. Shame. Don't join this. Yeah, shame. <laughs> shame. It's like it's not that weird. It's not blood related, and it's not like he. You didn't grow up with him. Like you just like basically his. That mom makes and it your better, I guess. Just married, so it's not like. It's, you know, it's not like as bad, but still kind of weird. Like, I can't imagine it being romantic unless creepy. you, your dad, and his mom broke up. Like, by the way, that was a that was a manga story. There's a manga based on that premise where like these two people are in school together and they kind of have a weird crush for each other, but then their parents like get together. And so literally the manga story is the parents decide to like go off on a honeymoon to see if they decide they want to get married while the other two have to like live (laughs) together. that's how that works. So which one of these mangas are you thinking about? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what it was called, but I remember I read about it. She's describing a genre. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. this was like 10 years ago I heard about this manga. I don't even know what it's called. There's literally a genre of anime that's about brother and sister hooking up and shit, right? Isn't there? I've had to... My brother found anime of that once and like... Was, yeah, uh, found. We watched like three episodes of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, called, it's called my... I can't believe my sister is this cute or something. Don't watch it. I mean, yes, so yes, I have heard of I that. I have seen so that name is insane. I had to watch five episodes of that shit. Don't watch it. You With had, my brother in the room. You had to? No, I, I we just put it up there and went, Sarah, I let's watch I can't believe. I typed in I can't believe and the first one is I can't believe you've done this. Oh god! I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> it's really oh, bad, god. guys. Don't watch it. I can't it's believe really my sister bad. is this cute. Yeah, Orimo. this is a real thing. It's really, no it's really bad. God. It was really weird. It was. Really, I think my favorite really gift, weird. anime gift, is the one that's um. The guy brushing the girl's teeth until she orgasms or something. Or was it the other I've way seen that. seen that. I've seen a clip of that. I, I think she it was on Reddit. It was just like a random snippet. <laughs> and I was like, this. what the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> what happened here? Is that from? I, I can't remember who brushed no, who's Don't watch feet. anime, Char. Just go on YouTube and type in AMV Hell and watch all of those. <laughs> oh, the oh Naruto my shit? Gosh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, they're actually pretty good. It's basically just people take like, basically like gif length scenes from anime and they take the audio from like family guy or something and they mash it up and it's <laughs> actually really funny those are really funny <laughs> back then i, I the back then i watched I know, quite though. quite a bit of like lakin park soundtrack with animation <laughs> <laughs> basically yeah. right? i remember seeing one of my first exposures to lincoln park was some really cool scene like vegeta just like catching all these bullets out of the air to like lincoln park like oh that's amazing <laughs> i was like you know 13 dude yeah. that was my introduction to evanescence except it was eight like actual <laughs> amvs where it was like music video kind of stuff so <laughs> no shame <laughs> that was me yeah that's kind of that's why i think a lot of anime fans know bring me to life so well because that was the only song used for every amv ever <laughs> for the longest time <laughs> yeah and chester's gone now that fucking sucks. It's so sad. Who? Yeah. Oh, oh, Chester. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, news. <laughs> yeah. No incest about... news today. Please, no more incest. I no can't. No more <laughs> incest <laughs> news. Maybe next. Please, week. No. <laughs> Maybe next, next week when I finish this game, I'll let you. Know. <laughs> it's um, it's um, who who made Heavy Rain again? What's his name? The French guy with all the David emotions. David Cage. Oh uh, yeah. David Cage. It's his new game. It's all about incest. Shit. Yeah, I, I'm not. I it's VR. I mean, the last one. Uh, so yeah, news, video games. First one, Mighty Number no. Nine has finally shipped their physical Kickstarter rewards. <laughs> Good for them. Oh yeah. How long was this? <laughs> I don't know. 10, 20 years. <laughs> Mighty. It's like ten years. Mighty Number no. Nine oh Kickstarter. Uh, 2013 Four years It took them four years To ship fucking Cardboard oh, okay. boxes Not quite 10 Okay wow. so So The I think the $60 tier Or something Got you a physical Reward Physical box Of the game And they literally Meant that It's literally Just the physical box With no game inside <laughs> Oh man <laughs> And the cardboard box You also have to Put it together yourself <laughs> Because they Um they opened it up to sh- save on shipping, and and the manual that comes to be to be put into the box doesn't fit the box. <laughs> oh, no. Mighty is the best Kickstarter ever. Like seriously. <laughs> what were they thinking? 
kick. Like, this they is... were not thinking. Uh, That's the problem. Uh, <sighs> it's the best thing. The nine I'm means sure no. I'm not sure if it's funny or sad or both. Okay, that screams, that screams, they're desperate to get this product pushed out because it's been so freaking long, but they yeah. have to consider budget, so they go to one company to make a, to like print a bunch of these boxes, and then they go to another company to print a bunch of the pamphlets mm -hmm. to go inside, mm -hmm. but, and they, and they, they just didn't do enough, uh, they cut twice and measured once, let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Good job. Great. Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> and that is why if just because you're really good at making games doesn't mean you know how to run a company. Mm. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's the sad truth. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, PlayStation Plus prices are going up. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Um, only in Europe. And a bunch of like other regions oh. that is like doesn't have their own pricing but is kind of sharing Europe's pricing like South Africa basically um, normal pr back then it was 40 euros or 40 pounds and now it's basically going up by 10 so fucking expensive mm. just to play online of games that you already have fucking shit so, it's so uh, weird yeah that is why I only play single player exclusives on my PS4 I don't play more multiplayer games because I'd feel really fucking stupid to play to pay for online yeah especially since we're already paying for internet access yeah and um and somebody was asking on the thread can somebody explain to me why are they charging for online it's like greed what the fuck what else is there and fuck Microsoft I mean, for starting this shit then, then, then you'll start getting people that say like oh there's server maintenance and oh fuck that they they say but server maintenance, but their download speeds much. are still shit. <laughs> I can barely. I'm not saying it's a good anything. excuse. Yeah, I'm just saying know, that's the that's one that they come say. up with. That's what they'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but fuck Microsoft for starting this. Fuck you. Um, also, which is something really weird. Uh, okay, so it's sixty euros. Sixty euros, fifty euros back then. Fifty pounds right now. Um, it's cheaper to buy three one month uh, three one month um, memberships compared to one three month membership oh no what? someone didn't run the numbers right <laughs> so so it costs 20 pounds for three months but per month it costs seven pounds so that one if you buy three months separately it's like one pound extra right but the euro one is 25 euros for three months but it's eight euros for one month Guys. So it's cheaper by one euro if you buy it separately. Guys. <laughs> no one ran the math. <laughs> Seriously, like, the EU region always get fucked with prices. And Australia. Ugh. Like, these... <laughs> uh, sucks to be them. Uh, so, yeah. And they basically just, like, increase the prices without telling anyone. Basically, they just send an email. Hey, prices are gonna go up. Pretty much. <laughs> Starting from... The big middle August. finger gif in them. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, rubbing, oh, the prices are going to go up. Oh, no, that's terrible. <laughs> and everybody was, like, calling for a boycott. No, we shouldn't be paying for multiplayer, uh, but everybody's going to pay for multiplayer anyway, so that's really no point. Yeah. What are you going to do? Not pay for multiplayer? Going <laughs> to yeah. be a loser? Yes. <laughs> Uh, not much this week. That was the second one. Last one is Metroid, the new Metroid game for the 3DS, which is a remake of Metroid Two. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I had not heard, I don't recall that. Yeah, Metroid Two: Return of Samus. Cool. Uh, Metroid: Samus Returns is the 3DS update. Totally gonna get that. Mm. But <laughs> they they announced some stuff that you can unlock with Amiibos. Oh, hey, at least they're still being used. <laughs> <laughs> I forget about I'm not sure things. if you want to be supportive of this kind of thing, though. No, 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 you oh, don't. Yeah. Um, so, you have to get one of the amiibos to unlock the art gallery, and you have to get the other Aww. amiibo to unlock hard mode. Really, guys? That's horrible. Oh, and you still have to finish the game before you can unlock all this shit. 
Jeez finish Louise. the game and help the amiibos before you can unlock shit that's usually been put into games for millions of years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, come on, people. Yeah, it's really. Ah, uh, fuck this. I mean, we saw this coming, right? It's like. Yeah, I'm not surprised, but I guess so. Sad. Yeah. <sighs> come on. And the worst part is. I'm not sure if this. Okay, so putting modes behind paywall definitely the worst part. Also, another mm-hmm. shitty part is if you can actually get the amiibos at retail price. Yeah. Because it's always limited. Scalpers, fuckheads, they buy and then they sell at like double the price and shit like that. So it's like literally limited edition modes. <laughs> like, I don't. Uh. And then I've seen people, I, I saw some comments saying, like, if you're really a big fan of Metroid, you would have gotten the Amiibos anyways. But that's not really the point, is it? No. <laughs> no. <sighs> Whatever. It's dumb. I, I, I don't see consoles lasting very much longer. They just keep suiting themselves in the foot with stuff like this. I mean, they can't yeah. keep up with the upgrades available that you can do on PC, they're charging for online access that yeah. you don't have to pay for if you're running through your PC. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think the I think what's gonna stand I... the test of time is probably gonna be Nintendo with like the Switch and 3DS. They they have that portability thing going on, um, which I think if they were gonna survive, they'd have to move over to being um, like all the companies: Microsoft, Sony. And Nintendo would have to just pretty much only be portable devices that you can take with you. Yeah, Where PC. Did we get PC cut Master off? Race. I it was you yes, were talking Kelly, but I don't yeah. know what you were saying. You were saying PC but Master Race. Yeah, the PC Death Master Race. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> PC Master. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I've always loved console. Like, I have yeah. a, a, a fairly extensive collection myself. Yeah, I don't want to see them die, but mm-hmm. I have to look at the reality of things. The fact that they're um, yeah, that, that, I think that was the thing I said right before I cut out was charging for online multiplayer that mm-hmm. you're able to get for free, mm-hmm. uh, or not for free, but like it's it's not an extra charge if you're doing it on the PC. Except for except for games like WoW or Eve Online, there are a few like that where you're having to charge you you are charged a monthly subscription, but by and large you don't have to worry about that. Um, plus, and that model seems to be dying out. Hmm. That model. Seems to be there haven't really been any many new games very that few. have that pay model. Yeah, very few. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, especially especially with the um, indie Free developers play, and stuff. Then, yeah. yeah, they can't afford um, to. I think they need the player base. Yeah. So now I'm just wondering: is like when when is the death knell for consoles? Like I I would see it coming within the next <laughs> five to ten years. I think. They're just not gonna, or they're gonna shift over to handheld. Because I, I see, I see Nintendo like the Nintendo Switch and the um, 3DS and everything like that. I see that surviving just because it's, it's what a, itch. a lot of, <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's also just like it's what parents consider safe for their kids. It's not the big scary internet. Oh, it's just Nintendo. It's okay. You know, yeah. we can we can um, we can close our iron fist and but make a, sure that they don't but there's a difference from buying like a 150 dollar 3ds to like a 300 dollar nintendo switch right i mean from the parents what if point of view what if mobile gaming really takes off Please yeah don't. it has i don't think mobile it gaming has. is like a competitor for the console no no yeah. i'm just i'm just saying like portable having a portable device right 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 oh, yeah, so yeah, like sony sony and microsoft or sorry yeah sony and microsoft i'd see them staying in the game if they switched over to having some kind of portable thing but then how can you really compete with nintendo unless they continue their exclusive access By to not certain titles having amiibos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so i just i'm so sad like the way consoles have evolved it's just not uh yeah not looking not like a portable business model but i really yeah. can't see i really can't see it dying off because i think there's enough of the I really hate using this word. I think that's enough of the casual fan base or gamer <laughs> to keep it running. I don't know. I just feel that way. Yeah, I think. Well, I think it will. will and, really and, 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 and I still think like having a PC is still a bit daunting to some people. Like having yeah. to choose the parts and build it or whatever. 
Yeah, I, I think what will really be interesting to see is um, what kind of the kind of the after millennials <laughs> think with consoles, because like with our generation, it's very it's pretty still pretty mixed. Where it's like you have some that you know they managed to get a PC, and some that really they can't really afford that. You know, because even though PCs in the long run, I, if you're as far as like a gaming computer and st- gaming like equipment or whatever, a PC is technically probably going to save you money in the long term. It's just a initial huge investment simply because right. <laughs> Steam alone <laughs> gives you access to games way cheaper than anything on console ever will. But consoles are bigger te- selection. Yeah, and a bigger mm-hmm. selection too. But consoles, you know, are technically are a cheaper investment in the in the beginning than than PCs are. You know, PC, you have to spend, you know, way more than a console, usually, uh, to get it up and running and such like that. And so in that case, you know, that may still determine. I definitely agree that I think handhelds are probably going to stick around for a while, unless they jump solely on the mobile or the tablet platform. But I don't, but that to me still seems very, like, PC-ish in some ways, because, you know, it's, I, I think that's a bit more comparable to that. I don't know. It'll. I think it'll depend what the generation after us. You know, are they going to be more into PC or are they really going to keep those consoles around? I don't know. Well, I think I think what would work is if, um, like you said, the plug and play aspect. Like Mm -hmm. you spend a couple hundred bucks, you take it home, you you plug it into the wall, it just works. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's a really valid point because a lot of people, even just buying a seat a a PC and setting up Steam, like having to navigate through that kind of interface. For some people, even that is like, what? I don't get it. Like, what? Is this store <laughs> Just button? look at it. You're not even looking at it. Why can't this be like the app store? Like, this doesn't make sense. What the <laughs> fuck? You know what I mean? Um, Are these so, real people yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> No, this Someone is just, just these, these are just Calliisms. That's all. <laughs> Those straw man arguments. <laughs> um, oh, actually. Those I actually people. No, I, know <laughs> I do know people like that in real life, but um, not. Yeah, Not they were like, they'll be like, but no, I know where people is it, with that mentality. It's literally on the screen. It's in, if you fucking stop looking at me and looking at the screen, you'll see it. You'll see it. Just look at the screen. Well, people don't want to read. That's the problem. Uh, people don't want to read. It's fucking millennials it's, and their avocado and coffees and not reading shit. <laughs> avocado. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's the reason that we can't afford houses, houses because, because we're having too much avocado. damn avocado yeah. on the toast. The toast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> is that from something? Yeah, it's literally yeah, from it's something. From an, it's from an I, it's article. It's an Australian millionaire. Oh, no. millionaire. He said, like, millennials can't afford houses because we buy too much avocados. <laughs> I remember some politician here was saying that, like, poor people could afford health care if they weren't buying cell phones. Yes, that, that was <laughs> actually like, said. I'm so sick, but I have yep. all these cell phones. <laughs> Do poor people buy cell phones every month? Yeah, apparently, <laughs> right? according to this guy. But anyway, that's, yeah, no, that actually was said. Yeah. There's another, anyway, but yeah, <laughs> avocado on toast. Yeah. So, but point yeah. being, um, <laughs> plug and play, I think, is yeah. what's going to keep consoles around. So I would see, I think I think that's the shift for, of, of the direction that they're going to go into. It's like, it's just going to be specialized Call of Duty, Halo, um, Assassin's Creed machines. Mm-hmm. And they'll just have to pay extra to play online. Yeah. I wonder if companies like Alienware, if they just got better in some abstract way, they lowered <laughs> the barrier for entry so people could buy that more easily than a uh, console. If that could, yeah. I mean, that was the idea. Uh, I, I don't know if it was the idea, but that was the potential of the Steam boxes, right? They could have just You're right. They could have just put in like okay. All the boxes must have this, 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 this specs. Maybe one or two different ones. But no, they just let all the different companies make all these different boxes. And like, so bad. It's really expensive for the specs you're getting. And it's like, you're just literally just buying for the brand because it's like fucking Alienware or whatever, Razer. And it's like, nobody give a shit. If they just made... Yeah, I'd call that fadware. Yeah, if they just made <laughs> like proper... If they went for the Apple way instead of the Android way, I think it would have <laughs> been better. Meaning uh, things that only work with your other things? No, like or this much to be considered a Steam box or whatever, you must be using ah, this specs okay. kind of thing. Like because Android okay. has like a bunch of different phones from a di- bunch of different manufacturers, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. They should have just made it into one streamlined thing. I think yeah, I think that's probably true for the Steam yeah, box. Yeah, because because the reason why so many people 
don't get PCs because it's overwhelming. Like they don't know like, mm-hmm. oh, this GPU, why, why is this it GPU is. better than this GPU? Should I pay five hundred bucks more than? Oh. And, oh, it's, yeah. and instead of simplifying the process, they almost made it worse. Yeah. Instead of like being able to choose my own parts, now I have to buy parts that's already in the thing. But it's st- there's still so many different fucking choices. Like, yeah. Oh, Valve. Oh, Valve. <laughs> I feel like every idea Valve does doesn't quite work out, except for the Steam like just selling games idea. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the only ones like, oh yeah, this took off. <laughs> Everything else. So yeah, no more news. This. Well, it's week. kind of. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, Kelly. Go. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that's that's kind of the um, the life of the entrepreneur. <laughs> True is enough. that you're gonna throw you're gonna throw a whole handful of ideas at the wall, and you're lucky if one of them sticks. Right. So the day that you have you're getting multiple ideas to stick, you're you're basically a savant at that point. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think most entrepreneurs, and I mean, I, I also could make that with uh, any kind of artist in some way, like, you get famous for that one thing, and any time you mm. try to deviate from that, and never, I mean, poor J.K. Rowling, for one, like, for example, like, I guess she's coming out with another Harry Potter-themed book, and, you know, a lot of people are excited. I actually just feel bad for her, because part of me sometimes wonders if she kind of wants to move on to something else because i can imagine just getting burnout from your own like world but like she really your own can't universe. Did, yeah did it, she have like she a can that got called out a couple of years ago yes she made she made a i never read it i'm not a huge like harry potter person but i have friends who were like obsessed yeah. that's why i know all this but yeah she did write she had a pen name where she wrote some like random murder mystery novel and she didn't admit it at first it just went out there and sales were mediocre mm-hmm. at best and then she announced that it was hers and of course sales shot up but i haven't yeah. heard anything about it since it was probably from what i heard like decent but it wasn't typical mm-hmm. so it you know <laughs> it's not like her fans are gonna necessarily like they appreciate it because it's jk rowling not necessarily because what it was was really really good not the content know. but the creator exactly so i yeah. always feel just bad about those things just to put this out I know entrepreneur literally means like the ideas person, business person, whatever, right? But it mm-hmm. seems guess, yeah. like that word is usually used for smaller companies like startups. Like when you're mm-hmm. a certain size, you're no longer an entrepreneur in, in a way. I would, right. I was yeah. using it in just a mm-hmm. generic sense of being, mm-hmm. being a bit of a business sense. But an entrepreneur typically does mean like one person or... Like, like a tech uh, startup style. The creator of, yeah. of the business. Kinda. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so I just thought that like because Valve has so much money and resources, they should yeah. have oh, yeah, done no, it way It's not better. an entrepreneurship. It was just yeah. the first word that I'm, I'm just saying and, in general, if you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and when you brought an entrepreneur, it just got me thinking about this recent thing that just happened with this guy named Dave McClure. Everybody, anybody knows him? Mm-mm. The name is very familiar. Yeah, he is one of those like tech startup people that's always around where you are. For is this the uh, is this entrepreneur the, uh, angel investor based in San Francisco? Guy? What? Is this the selfie drone guy? He is the guy that started five hundred startups. Oh okay, no, no. Yeah, he so like he invests into startups and shit, and he like a bunch of like uh, startup tech startup founders. Yeah, sure. Uh, a bunch of like. St- tech startup founders female tech startup founders were like accusing him of like being of being of like sexually harassing them and shit Mm. and all he had to do was like made a I'm sorry article on like medium.com or whatever (laughs) it's just that'll that'll cover it it's all good now right I'm a creep I'm sorry so go read that I guess (laughs) oh that doesn't sound sarcastic at all (laughs) right so sincere uh, this apology. I, I hope he I hope he was just like, I'm sorry if you were offended. So it's not even that he owns it. He's just like, I'm sorry if I offend <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, and yeah. the only reason I, I heard about it is because one of the person he harassed was like a Malaysian tech startup founder, female tech startup oh, founder. And it got into okay. the local news here. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, so yeah. yeah. Represent. <laughs> Anything else, guys? So we good to wrap up. <sighs> I, I got nothing. Cool. Uh, yeah. Kelly, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter and Instagram. I'm Kelly Xenon across all platforms. Um, 
and I hope to see you in my stream sometime. Yeah. Sarah, I can people find you. Hey guys, <laughs> you can find me under Sarahscopic, S-A-R-E-H-S-C-O-P-I-C. I'm mainly on YouTube, I'm also on Facebook, I'm also on Twitter. I do have a Twitch, I'm not doing tons with it yet, but I hope to soon in the next couple of months. Literally just type that into Google and you'll find me, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And I'm Faux Hamner on YouTube, and I guess Twitter technically. <laughs> Poopo no pew pew and it'll be everywhere. So yeah, you already know all this. So, uh, yeah, this has been episode 109 of the Play Another Podcast. Woo! Thank you very much for watching this thing. We'll see you next week. Poopo. Poopo. Bye. Bye. Bye.